Good evening, Carlos. Thanks for these. Uh, your final essays in this pack. Uh, looking through them, they already look pretty good. Well done for getting this far in the course. I can see from a few examples of your work that you've improved considerably. We're very impressed. So let's jump straight in. Since the inception of cities, the issue of centralization, this uh, doesn't need to be capitalized, uh, has been causing a constant challenge uh, for governments. I would not include it there. Or maybe their governments. If you're referring to cities, it would be their governments. Um, in order to solve this, local entities are imposing companies or or are imposing a rule that companies should move outside of metropolitan areas. Again, capitalization not necessary there. Um, or I would say uh, maybe like local authorities are insisting that companies move outside of metropolitan areas. There are clear advantages for companies as well as downsides. This essay will explain both sides of this initiative, providing examples from furniture companies and internet connectivity uh, to support arguments and prove points. Cool. Some minor corrections in there. Uh, we must acknowledge that following this decentralization initiative will bring important advantages for companies. Cool. Nice topic sentence there. Let's see if you have stuck to the acronym. Uh, this is because the land price and overheads are cheaper uh, in regional locations, creating a beneficial position for doing business. Cracking. Furthermore, raw materials are located in rural areas, and so it makes sense for many businesses, um, plural businesses, to be situated near to their required resources. Cracking. For example, a furniture factory, not plural, uh, would be in a better position if it was located, um, let's say, close to a source of timber, such as a forest, avoiding logistics expenses. Therefore, having companies relocated outside the main city can bring important benefits for doing business. Or, because this is now repeating what we've already said, in this sentence, we could point out maybe an additional benefit. Uh, therefore, having companies relocate outside of the main city limits um, can be beneficial to the environment by reducing uh, emissions associated with transport. Or, uh, having companies relocate outside the main city could reduce congestion. Therefore, increasing profit for businesses. Mention, um, yes, the decrease in emissions and the increase in profit, maybe, for uh, businesses. Get a bit uh, more specific about what these benefits are. Just a little bit. Delve a little deeper. So, nevertheless, relocating companies would bring some disadvantages, not only in the operation of the firm, comma, but also by employing local people that may lack skills. Furthermore, business owners' needs to be aware, uh, I would just say, um, business owners need to be aware of the infrastructure, internet condition, general conditions are less favorable than me. Let me read that again, one sec. So what I would say about this is, up here, you've gone into that rural people may lack the skills necessary or the training necessary um, to perform some of the jobs required for these companies. These sorts of people, you know, are numerous in the city, not so numerous in rural areas. But then you've gone straight into infrastructure afterwards, uh, whereas I think this could have used some expansion. Um, or just sticking to this because your example um, supports this statement 
so I would maybe stick to the fact that um, if you're saying that there's disadvantages for business owners, keep that as your topic sentence and then say um, maybe not only are rural people generally less trained or less well trained than city dwellers, but infrastructure such as internet, internet connection um, and general conditions are less favourable than in the city. For instance, companies in the city can enjoy a much faster internet connection on average uh, than uh, buildings in rural areas, allowing better performance um, and, let's say, greater efficiency. Yeah. And then we don't need this last part here because we've just expanded fully in that sentence. And then, yeah. Thus, there are relevant downsides that can change the normal practice of operating the business. Uh, so I would say there. Um, thus, the disadvantages may have major negative consequences for business for the businesses because the impact of an unskilled workforce and an inefficient data connection you know those things are going to have drastic consequences in conclusion although moving companies outside of the major cities um only need one of these words here would or might represent enormous benefits for business owners, uh, it must not be forgotten that the way of doing business can also be affected by the rural condition. Yeah, or maybe um, it must not be forgotten that the fundamental operations of the business could be affected by rural conditions. Because um, it's quite a drastic altering, isn't it? It's the, it's the fundamental um, principles of the business that suffer from an unskilled workforce um, in an underconnected area. Let's say. So let's move on to your next task one. So yeah, I mean, your structure is great. You stuck to the acronym, which is wonderful. But I would say in this paragraph stick to one idea and if you need to include another one just to back it up either fold it into another sentence or put it at the end with as a, a furthermore as a little bit of a, a flourish of an example but what this comes across as is two topic sentences um so these could be you know the the first bit nevertheless relocating uh, relocating companies uh, would bring many disadvantages, full stop, and then begin to list the disadvantages and then support it with a, a uh, with an example and then have a list. I think that would be the neatest structure. So really the only point of structure is to, to just to tidy that up a little bit. And uh, yeah, listen for the suggestions for phrasing. But no, these are great. Well done. So, your task one, general. Dear Uncle Tom, I'm so happy to know that you've decided to come to visit me, I would say during your holidays. Unfortunately, uh, I won't be at home at the time of your arrival, but please do not worry. Um, I would use a comma here. Unfortunately, I won't be home at the time of your arrival, but please do not worry, as I'll return at night and I can show you the magnificent city lights. I would use a full stop here, because this sentence then gets a little bit long. After a nice walk, comma, we can have dinner in a nice French restaurant. How does that sound to you, I would say? This is not quite correct. How does that sound to you? If you're making a suggestion to someone, something you've presented to them, you refer to it as that. So how does that sound to you? Back to the main point, I will give you some simple instructions about how to get here or there if you're talking about the restaurant there, if you're talking about where you are currently writing from then it's here, but I think it's the restaurant 
So I'd say how to get there. Um, and again, do not worry, it's really easy. That's cool. First of all, as soon as you arrive, walk outside of the airport and you will find on your left a yellow shop, which is the information centre. Uh, if you look carefully behind it, you don't need the off there. If you look carefully behind it, uh, comma, you will find the taxi stand. Please keep handy some cash uh, and the home address that I sent you via text message. Great. The trip will only take 10 minutes. No need for the F. Uh, finally, when you reach your destination, you can find the house keys. Correct collocation is house keys, not home keys. Um, under the flower pot. And then... I would maybe just omit that comma and say, under the flower pot that's on your left next to the main door. Maybe just put a that's to direct them. Under the flower pot that is on your left next to the main door, but contracted a little bit, so it's that. Under the flower pot that's on your left next to the main door. Any issues or questions, you can always contact me on my phone. You could take, this could be a semicolon because you've got two complete sentences here that are related. Um, a semicolon being halfway between a full stop and a comma is very useful when you have two complete sentences that are related to each other. Any question, any issues or questions, uh, you can always contact me on my phone. Semicolon. I can't wait to see you. Love your nephew Carlos. Wonderful. Great. So yeah, what I would do is I would still, even though you don't have to submit these with another set of questions unless you pick up another course from us, uh, I would still go through these and correct uh, all of the little minor corrections that I, I gave you just to improve the flow of it a bit um, and just have a good read through again. This will help you to proofread your work at the end of your exam and you'll be able to spot errors much more easily if you've paid attention to the ones that were highlighted. But again, very, very well done for getting to the end of the course. And if you do wish to continue having your essays corrected, uh, there are instructions in the email with which you can do that. Uh, but thanks again. Um, I have been Andrew, and I'm sure you've had Ben correct some of your essays as well. Uh, have a lovely day. I'll speak to you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye now.